Welcome to Decouple Drupal Dev on Docker with Doxel doing the dirty work, aka Doxel does Drupal decoupled on Docker, aka something something alliteration decoupled. Uh, I'm JD Flynn, I'm lead software engineer at EPAM. You can find me on all the slacks, I go by Dorf, on Twitter, JD does dev, and Drupal.org is you Dorficus. A little bit about me, I've been doing PHP and Drupal for years. Um, I've been doing HTML since the 90s. I had the greatest sound clip web page of my town of like a thousand people. Uh, I learned basic kind of around the same time from a magazine. Uh, does anybody remember 321 Contact? Yeah, in the back of it they used to have a program that you could write and copy verbatim. And I that helped me a lot with some debugging, learning debugging at a young age. Uh, I'm also on the Drupal CWG community health and conflict resolution team. Uh, so a little bit of housekeeping. There's Contrib Day on Friday. Amy June is a person that you want to see if you have any questions about that. And she's also looking for work. So uh, she also won an award. She'll be happy to tell you about it, even if you don't ask. All right. So. Just a disclaimer, to get the most out of this, it'll help if you know at least a little bit about Docker, um, comfortable on the command line, you know what a Drupal is, and you have an understanding of decoupled architecture. What we're gonna cover is just a basic setup of a decoupled mono repo, so we're gonna have the front end and the back end all in one repo. Uh, back end, obviously, Drupal, for purposes of this, using Gatsby as a front end, but it could be any front end, Next.js, Next, whatever works for you, uh, with a little bit of customization there. What we don't cover, or what I'm not going to cover is, I'm not going to teach you how to set up Webpack and all of your React stuff. Um, once you see what I have for Gatsby, you'll understand that <laughs> I, I didn't take the time to do all that, just going to demonstrate a few things. Um, we're not going to go over all the modules that you need on Drupal side to do decoupled. Uh, and we're not going to cover your questionable life choices. That's on you. <laughs> so I do have a request. If there's anything that I just completely misspeak about, if I'm telling you the wrong information, the sky is green, feel free to correct me in a firm yet constructive manner. So a brief overview. First off, how many of you are have used Docker? Familiar with it? OK, good. Um, has anybody used Doxel yet? I know a couple of people. OK. All right, so high-level overview of Docker. Um, we're going to cover that. High-level overview of Doxel get you into the weeds a little bit. But mainly, we're looking at containerized decoupled architecture. So let's talk about Docker. Uh, the obligatory picture of the whale. I think this is a requirement for any presentation that has the word Docker in it. Um, and we're going to go over this pretty quick but I do feel the need to give kind of an overview of how Docker works. The basics, it's based on Linux containers. Um, not all containers are Docker containers, but all Docker containers are Linux containers. Uh, I'm sure I'm syncing up there, okay. Docker provides an environment for Linux containers. It's, it's kind of a, a place for them to live. It puts everything together. But Docker is not containers itself. Um, now images define containers. They're just what a container should do, what it should have every time you spin it up. And a container itself is ephemeral. It, it can, you should expect it to disappear. Uh, shouldn't expect anything to remain persistent in it. When you destroy or shut it down, it's gone. Next time you start it up, it's just going to have what the image defined it to have. Now, storage, we can't have that persist using volumes. Uh, we can do mounted volumes, named volumes, bind mounts. Uh, and that's useful because you don't want to have to reinstall everything every time you spin up your containers or your, your system. And services are several containers connected using Docker Compose. 
Uh, so kind of an image of what all that did, or the parts of Docker. We've got the client, which is what we usually interact with here, with Docker build, pull, Docker run, or other commands based on what, or depending on what you're using. Then those commands go to the Docker daemon, um, which will either, depending on where they are, if you have the images already on your system, it'll spin up a container based on those. If you don't, it reaches out to the registry, grabs up images, brings them in, and then spins up the container. Does that make sense? Like I said, it's a high level over, in, overview, but I figure everybody needs at least some understanding. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about Doxel. Doxel is written in bash scripting, completely bash scripting. So on most systems, you don't have to install anything like Node or even PHP to get it to run. Just uh, all it needs is your basic command line. Um, it uses Docker services, Docker Compose, extensively. Uh, and any command that needs to be run inside the container, if you're running it from the host machine or the actual computer, you're going to start it with fin. And there are a few commands that are built in where you don't have to do anything else, but any other commands, it's fin exec, and then whatever your command is, and it'll run it as though you're in the container. It's extremely configurable, which we'll go over in a moment. And because all the applications are fully containerized, it's very portable between developers. Um, so, I'm going to look at the architecture of just Doxel and Docker Compose, how they work. Now, in a traditional uh, virtual machine, we cut this in half, and every machine that you spin up would have its own you know, the command line database, web server, everything in there, have its own system services, get Docker for that, have its own host machine or virtual machine and infrastructure. You'd have a different virtual machine for every project. Whereas Docker and Doxel use services, so an individual project has its own CLI, all that. Another project can have similar but not the same, their own containers over here, but we're sharing the system services. The uh, DNS server, the SSH agent, those all run on Docker, which unless you're on a Linux machine, is a virtual machine uh, because our Docker containers are Linux containers, sorry. Fumbling my words a little bit. Uh, and that all uses resources of your host machine, which is the actual computer you're using, and just uses the infrastructure there. So the advantage is you don't have to have an individual set of services, an individual virtual machine, all kinds of resources that you really aren't going to want to utilize if you have three or four projects on your system. Okay. That makes sense? All right, so we're gonna build a project now for the purposes of not knowing how fast the Wi-Fi was gonna be coming here. I did a little bit beforehand, um, but still, we're gonna do a quick live demo just to show some of the default stacks, how we can get things spun up, some of the options, uh, how to start the system, and how to, customize it so yeah. there we go all right so to create a project then project create let's call it midcamp demo all right, so we get, and I might try to enlarge this a little bit. No. <laughs> so we get some options here, and it's, let me go up. Unfortunately, it won't let me, there we go. Uh, I know it's probably hard to read for those of you in the back, but we've got a couple of different flavors of Drupal, WordPress, Magento, Laravel, Symfony, um, Graph CMS, even Backdrop. If you don't want to go PHP, we've got Hugo, Angular, Gatsby, all ready to spin up just by typing in a number. 
So I already did this with a Drupal 10 Composer version, and I'm not going to do it again because it'll download all the things and take forever. So, uh, so to start up after running that command, it'll run what's called fin init, and that is a blank file. It's a define your own solution however you want your project to start up. Uh, for us, did it open? There we go. The default fin init, it's going to, just gonna show my, oh great. Run project reset, which is gonna clear out absolutely everything. So fin init is, you know, destroy, scorched earth, then run a secondary command, init site, which basically is going to do our composer install after pulling down a Drupal repo. Now once all that's done, there are a few different things that happen to make it be able to run with uh, with a standard Drupal installation. Because stand uh, normally you don't have the connection to the database with your default settings PHP. Uh, so we have settings local, or local settings depending on what your naming, naming convention is. And to, if you're adding Doxel to a project, all you have to do is make sure that your, I'm sorry if that's hard to read. It, can you discern it from way back there? Okay. Just make sure that you're checking if a setting a local settings file exists, and if it does, load it up. And in there, we have our database connection, which is going to let the site run. And I just do any of you ever accidentally press down too hard on a, a touchpad and get the dictionary pulled up like way too often? Uh, and just a couple other things that you know you may or may not want to have the uh, Doxel specific. So if you're running a project create, like we pretended to do down here, you'll get this file with the uh, reverse proxy stuff for the vhost proxy setup. Uh, so let's look at, well, before I go on, does that make sense to get something spun up? And now, since we've got that spun up, I'm going to then project start. So if I hadn't done this beforehand, we'd be sitting for about five, 10 minutes, if not longer, waiting for the images to get pulled down just because of the speed of the Wi-Fi. Uh, so I did do it ahead of time. You're welcome. Um, but it's a basic setup. All we're going to have is the CLI, the database, and the web server. So if it also gives us a URL there, I'm going to take this over here. And there, we've got a full Drupal site. You can clap, yeah, make me feel good about myself. <laughs> All right, so that's that's simple. There, There's nothing to that. We've got three containers, uh, but it works. So let's do something a little bit more difficult and look at some of the available stacks. Uh, let me, getting used to controlling a screen that's behind me is Extremely disorienting. Alright, so there we go. Our services file is where all of the services that we're going to use live. And we pull in those services. You know, this is essentially a Docker Compose file uh, on whichever stack we want to use them for. So we've got couple different web servers. We've got either Apache or Nginx. Um, you know, our database options, MySQL, Maria, 
uh, Postgres. And then our CLI options, that's kind of where everything works, where our PHP lives. And each of these settings can be overridden. So say we want to use all of the good things about Doxel, but we want to use a different CLI image, a different PHP image. We can go into our, our project, and I don't know if it's showing me opening this. No, okay, well. And go to the Doxel YAML and which is, again, Docker Compose, add in services, CLI, just because my memory is not as great to remember every character. There we go. and define whatever PHP image or whatever we want. And then when we run fin update, it will update it with that image that we've defined in this file. So like I said, highly customizable. And you know, we do have different stacks to work with. If you wanna have basically Acquia out of the box, we've got all the services it depends on. Um, if you're doing just standard HTML and don't need database. Uh, if you're doing a node project, this one I find pretty interesting because with the labels, which are just settings that uh, we're setting inside the, the fin executable, you don't need to use port 3000 on, on the host. So you just spin up your node project, uh, start your dev server, and go to the domain that you, you define and it just works. I, I really, I did that the other day just testing something out and it kind of blew my mind. I figured I'd have to put in the port number. Uh, we also have Pantheon platform and all the stacks are extremely configurable to however you want to set them up. Any questions on the stacks before? There we go. Okay, but why should we use containerized setup instead of normal composer, NPM, or other commands from the host? Anybody think of a couple reasons? Well, Bert, what version of PHP do you have on your host right now? You know, it depends on the project. Exactly. Probably why do you do it? You can, you can specifically say which PHP. Yeah. Jack, what version of Node are you using on your? On my local machine, none whatsoever. I only have so, going through containers. You're a bad example. You, you were supposed to say, I don't know. <laughs> um, kind but, of sure. Hmm? Kind of sure. doesn't know. That's yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it makes it reusable. One of the biggest problems I... I'm sure that we've all run into is, well, it worked on my machine, uh, or it was broke on my machine, especially if you have somebody above you who doesn't realize <laughs> uh, how to use things. But this helps eliminate it by having a setup where you can make sure that all your developers, all your team are using the exact same. You know you each have PHP 8.1, you each have the same version of Node, the same version of NPM, the same version of uh, Ruby. If, if that's what you're into. Um, same version of Drush. You have all that because you're sharing the, the Docker files, the stacks, and the containers across multiple developers. So we use containers because of reliability, because we can, uh, we don't have to worry about that well worked on my machine because all machines are now equal, it's portable, so, Jack, I'm going to pick on you because you're sitting right there. Please. So if, if you're, is that a gazelle? Oh, uh, it is a uh, Galago. Galago, okay. Yeah. I have one of those too. So if your Galago you know, fell into Lake Michigan and you had a project, you pull down a GitHub repo with your, uh, 
with the containerized setup, how much time have you lost? Uh, today is a bad day for me because I'm here, so two two whole days. Okay. <clears throat> if if you didn't have containerized, you need to go through brand new system. You need to make sure that you have your the right version of PHP. All that stuff we just talked about. Um, reproducible. If the environment's same on multiple computers, then multiple people are going to run into the same problem, hopefully. And because it's containerized, it only uses the resources it's needed instead of having a virtual machine for everything. Has anybody worked with projects where you had to have an entire virtual box for every single project that you were working on? That will eat up your hard drive, eat up your memory faster than you can think of. So we've been talking about uh, Doxel a lot, but let's look at why I put some slides out of order, possibly. Um, Right, let me just. Okay, sorry, I, I accidentally duplicated a couple slides. Pretend you didn't see that. Uh, Kevin, edit that out for me, please. Um, so, what about storage? Well, there are a few volumes that are automatically set up by Doxel. And volumes are persistent storage that claim a spot on your hard drive. Uh, there's also mounts that don't necessarily claim their own spot, they just piggyback on the spot that already exists with content or files in it. Uh, but the volumes that are set up are the CLI home, the project root, and DB data. So CLI home is where your actual OS for your containers lives. Um, in most cases, for Doxel purposes, it's Ubuntu. Uh, and it's useful in case we want to customize the OS maybe add some stuff to it um, that should persist if we're, we're working on a long-running project and we don't want to, every time we shut it down, have everything disappear. You know, if, without removing the volume, you still have those settings available. The project root is where the project folder lives. So if we go back to here, the project root mounts to this session example folder. So everything that is in session example is in the container. So any changes that we make to any file in that folder will be reflected in the container. Okay. Nope. And DB data, any guesses on what that holds? Uh, your database. So you don't have to pull down a database every time from either a hosting provider or if you're one of the lucky ones who has a full database in your Git repository. So, all right, so let's get into the real reason that we're all here. Um, this is the scenario that brought me to putting together all of this is we wanted a portable local dev environment to be shared across the number of developers. <clears throat> it needs to run and serve Drupal. It also needs to run and serve Gatsby Develop, which is the dev server that when you run it, it's a Node.js server. And it can also serve the built site of Gatsby and Drupal. And on top of that, it simulates a major hosting platform. Make sense to everybody? So let's take a look at what we can do there. And for this, switch screens here. No, let's not save that. Is it closing them down? No. Oh well. So we're going to start off with our doxel.env file. Um, and we can set quite a few things in here. Do I have it to follow? For this, I'm going to use an Acquia stack because it's the one I had uncommented. But 
You can also use Pantheon, a default stack, Platform SH, or whichever stack you want to. This is just an environment variable that you set, uh, and Doxel does the rest. And as we all know, not all Docker roots are created equal, so it might be in web, it might be in Docker root, depending on what provider you're using. And a couple other settings that you might want to have in here, um, composer memory limit, because composer doesn't like me. Um, Xdebug, I use that extensively, but I don't enable it because that'll just tank your performance. And if you want to have custom images, or different images than what were our default, we could set those in there as well. Now, out of the box, um, Doxel will name your project whatever your project root folder is, .doxel.site, but you can change that by just put, setting the virtual host environment variable there. Now, where we really get into it is doxel.yaml. This is where we can <laughs> Uh, really customize all the things. So I'm gonna um, yada 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 my way to stage two. And you can see I've added a few things in here. So what I've done for this to work is we have this the CLI, which as we remember is where our PHP lives. But if you look at I don't think I've changed it in here yet. Right there. Where it has build, it's not pointing to an image from Docker registry or Docker hub. It's pointing to the folder here. And I took our base uh, Docker file, which exists in the Doxel setup, and I've added a couple things that I know I'm going to need for a decoupled project. Uh, mainly, every time we spin up this image, we're going to have npm, we're going to have uh, node, the right version, the pinned version, so that you know, all of our developers are going to be using the exact same version, uh, npm, and Gatsby CLI because I'm spinning up a Gatsby site. So why not make sure that it's part of the image or the container as it's built. So you can customize the Docker file as well, not just the, uh, the Docker Compose. You can add anything you want to. You could change the PHP version in here. If there are other things that you want to add in, as you can see, I've got you know a couple things here for testing. And my favorite alias, because LS, LH takes too long to type, so I just do LL. Uh, so when we do that, well, let me go back to stage one thing. Let's fin project start with stage one, which is going to have just the bare bones set up for Acquia. But you can see well, maybe you can't see because it's very small, smaller than I meant it to be. But for the Acquia stack, we're starting off with Solar, we're starting off with Memcache, as well as Varnish, and, uh, in addition to the three normal containers that we start with. So it, it's coming as, as close to an Acquia environment as possibly can. Uh, so it spits out our URL down at the bottom, midcamp doxel site. And I installed it with Umami. I absolutely love this demo <laughs> because it makes things so much easier. And it's content, so I don't have to think. But when we change it up to our additional stage two here, 
I'm going to run thin up, which updates the project. So if you're paying close attention, we've added another um, container here, decoupled preview. So that's going to be our preview for our our Gatsby dev uh, setup. But we want them to run together. So they're not all going to be on midcamp.doxel.site. Uh, so what I've done here is in our service, or sorry, Doxel YAML. I've added the web server is going to have its own CMS, that virtual host, and we can define that like I did in the Doxel environment. And our preview is going to be preview.virtualhost. So our uh, vhost proxy on the system service is just going to make that work. So now if we go back over here, do a quick refresh. It's going to be missing because we, we've moved the domain. I point that out because I forgot I moved the domain and I spent way too long uh, yesterday trying to figure out what the heck was going on with this demo. Oh, there we go. And now I haven't, so I don't think I have, I haven't quite set up the Gatsby and this stage of it, but we have things available for it. So if we go to preview, bad gateway, because it, it's seeing that the project exists, but there's no, um, no, no node server serving it. All right, so the next step to this is really to finish it up I'm going to head over to stage three, switch screens once again, and I've added a couple more things here. One is going to be static because when, uh, at least with Gatsby, I can't speak, I'm pretty sure that other front ends do the same. But with Gatsby, it generates a static site. It just serves HTML. So I gave it just for, for fun. I put it on Apache, where our web server for the Drupal site is on Nginx. So I've got two different web servers running two different domains. Um, and they're, they're working side by side. I also added our, so with that static container, simply just added the static host name. Um, the service gave it access to the project root, which is where, uh, sorry, words are hard from switching, <laughs> moving my head back and forth. Uh, the project root, which is where our project lives, gave it that label, the um, virtual host, and then where is that? and just set the Apache document root, which is tells it to look in the public folder. And right now, since I haven't built, there, there's nothing there for it to load up. Right, any questions so far? Anything I can clarify? With, I yeah. have a question. You have a Docker file in your .so directory. Yes. How did you get that? Sorry if I missed it, but is that generated by .so, or where did that come from? Uh, I made it. Um, so on the Docker file, and let me make sure it's pulling up. There we go. So the first line there from Doxel CLI PHP. Yeah. I'm taking everything that Doxel has and adding my own on top of it. So we get everything that's in the default Doxel CLI container uh, with the addition of, and it does come with Node on the default one, but I don't know which version, which are. And that could change if you change versions or if you don't have it pinned to the 3.2, if you just have three. Uh, 
So I pinned it to 1613. And then to call that, a uh, good call out that I didn't show that, uh, instead of Just got to pull. Line nine. Hmm? Line nine. That's the build. Oh yeah, I was uh, going to pull up one of the default stacks and yeah. Instead of having an image, is this line showing up? Instead of having an image directive here like we do in the default stack. Um, we're just saying that we're going to use, or instead we're going to build it and name our image whatever we want to name it. Uh, so I've got the project name, CLI. We're also extending the CLI service, so that's why we don't have to have everything uh, in the CLI here which is quite a bit. We're just overriding the parts of it that we need. And according to Apple Dictionary, CLI is an abbreviation for cost of living index because I pressed down <laughs> too hard in case anybody was wondering. Uh, so all these are already part of it. We're just extending on it. Kind of like extending a class or service in PHP. And it knows to look there. Yep. Uh, because we, we tell it to right here where we're saying look in the file our doxel stack services for the service cli yeah and then whatever is different here that's what we're going to overwrite does that clarify well no i understand that i guess i I'm just don't understand how it knows to look at the docker file in your dot doxel directory oh that that is the build line here um, project root .doxel services CLI. So you don't have to actually put in Dockerfile on that. It'll just look for Dockerfile in that folder, but it lives in the the project. Not really. Oh, I see. Okay. So th it's the build. Yeah. So, and you can do this with any, or you can extend out. Uh, Docker files for any of the services, it, even if you want to create your own uh, completely. But well, I wouldn't say from scratch because that would be a pain in the butt to <laughs> go from scratch. But uh, which is another thing, if you don't know, the the base Docker images of all Docker images is scratch, which is pretty much blank, and you have to do from scratch. And so Eric, did that clarify? Yes. Okay. I went to stage three, I believe. Yep. So we're going to thin up. Have you managed to solve the problem of pinning chromium? The, uh, no. I didn't even know that was an issue, so. I've had issues with that in the past with various um, like selenium based stuff. I think I remember something about it, but I. I they haven't actively done anything uh, to try and handle it. All right, so stage three. Now you can see that our static is up, our preview, our web, everything has been spun up here. So I'm going to, just because it's always safe, press CR. So in theory, what should happen is I can go to our CMS page our preview isn't going to work because we don't have anything there and we should see similar with static. Okay, so there's nothing there, which is why it's forbidden. But 
it's actually pointing to something. So, first thing I'm going to do, head back into VS Code and run Fin Gatsby Dev. Now this, another nice thing about uh, Doxel is that you can add as many commands or custom commands as you want and they're all written in Bash. So let me open that up. And I apologize, I thought that the folders that I was opening on my screen were also opening there and I didn't pay attention, so sorry about that. Um, but under the commands, all these are custom commands that I've had for one reason or another and added in here. Um, and one, Gatsby Dev. And all it does is say that we're running in the preview container rather than the CLI or web and telling it, go into the Gatsby folder and run Gatsby develop and run it on this host. That's a Docker specific thing so that it's accessible to the outside world. So when I run that, Cross your fingers, toes, and eyes that it works. So this step always takes a little bit. While we're waiting, uh, everybody know they're grabbing for lunch downstairs. <laughs> food. Good call. I'm also having food. Here's a question for you. Yeah. Is there? I see you're having two separate um, web instances in the same uh, command, which makes sense when you're doing a decouple that one goes to the other. Um, is there is there any any difference between doing two different Docker or Doxel instances running at the same time? You can, but um, I, it depends on. Okay, it's going. It depends on your use case. Like for this one, I specifically did a mono repo. Uh, when you do two different Doxel instances, say you have one specifically for Node and one specifically for Drupal if you want it to be completely separated out, um, then there's a few other steps that you might need to take to make sure that your, uh, your Drupal instance can effectively communicate with your Node instance. Like in, in this, the host name for, from one to go to the other, and this is getting a little bit into Gatsby, Open Gatsby. Well, we, we do this kind of thing too. Like we've got Drupal portals that do like rostering and test launching for Tau test runners. Yeah. Uh, and we've got the Tau project in its own Doxel project, yeah. and then the Drupal project in its own Doxel project. As long as it's like web to web, those will communicate just on just know, like Tau dot Doxel dot site. What we did have problems with though was trying to get like in one of our testing platforms, we have like an intermediary data warehouse. That wants that, that the Drupal site wants to talk to database wise, and I, I have not yet figured out how to make my one project hit a database in another project, just the database. I haven't oh, yeah. been able to make that work yet. Yeah. In fact, I think we were slacking about that. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember why I asked because um, in production, is your Gatsby server going to be a different server and let's say configuration than the Drupal website. So like we have one hosting service here and we have one right. hosting service here. Yeah. So one project that I've, uh, I've seen it done both ways and one B project that I've worked on um, did it so that it was a mono repo and we set up Gatsby Cloud to look only at the Gatsby folder in the project root. So oh, yeah. instead of looking at www, it looked at uh, the Gatsby folder and it still had everything there, which is why I kind of simulated an Nginx uh, thing versus Apache here. Another thing, if you're using two different um, stacks or two different Doxel apps, internally they can use the the host name 
that you define within the same stack. So if I wanted to ping the CLI, it would just be CLI. But if you're doing it externally, which would be Docker to Docker separate applications, you'd have to use the full domain uh, to because it'll have to go out of the container, back down. Yeah. All right, so it looks like we've got a build, or at least a preview. Well, let's go back here. Yay, we've got a Gatsby site. And now, we've also got, one of the things I love about Gatsby 404 page is it just gives you everything. And so this is pulling all the data from Drupal from the Umami. Uh, and then finally, the last piece of the puzzle, just to simulate the fully built project. Hopefully it doesn't take as long because I'm starting to get hungry myself. Then gets be build, which is again one of those custom commands that I have. But it clears out the cache, clears the public folder, and then runs the build. Now, unfortunately, because I did clear out the, the cache, um, it does take a little bit of time to rebuild those files again. Um, but you know, I've had it ingrained in me since starting with Drupal that you clear the cache or you die. <laughs> While waiting on that, another nice thing that um, having this is specific to Gatsby. I know I said I wasn't going to do, you know, getting too deep in the woods in Gatsby, uh, but if I can scroll up just a little bit here. It also gives you your graphical IDE. Um, so if you're familiar with that, it's basically the query builder for Gatsby for anything GraphQL. So it'll help you get in the JSON API and then decide how you want to get the data from there. So you still have access to that by going to the, the preview site and three underscores, three underscores, three underscores. I say that because I spent way too much time wondering why it wouldn't work when I only had two underscores. All right, it's not showing there, but we are moving. Okay. So now, there we go, and now we've got, this is the static site that is being served from the Apache server. So any questions, any comments, concerns, insults? Be more than happy to answer before we go back to the slides. I have a quick question. Yeah. If we're new to Gatsby, where is a good place to get started? Mm -hmm. um, the Gatsby docs have some really good uh, demo or tutorials on how to get started with it. But what I would recommend is, do you know React? Sure. Okay. <laughs> because I wouldn't tell you to learn Gatsby without learning React first. Okay. Just like I wouldn't tell you to learn jQuery without <laughs> knowing at least JavaScript or some. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, Gatsby.org or Gatsbyjs.org, the open source side has some really good docs, and they've got a good Discord and a uh, presence on a lot of the different Slacks. All right, so since we did a uh, live demo, <laughs> I set the bar pretty low. But so what was the point of all this? Again, I mentioned this before, but Doxel, Doxel and Docker make it easy to configure local dev environments without a lot of time or effort. Granted, I had them all pre-made, but the time most of the time that I spent making them was downloading the images on hotel Wi-Fi. So I saved you all that headache of having to watch those images get pulled. Uh, and if we wanted to, say we want to change a version of PHP, it's as configurable as going into our Vaxel YAML, 
change it here or it's hard to oh, services and so on. Docker file. Change it, downgrade to 8.0, run fin up. It'll pull down that image instead, and you have a different version of PHP. So if you want it, that comes in handy, especially with Drupal, making sure that you have all the the, the typing done correctly for 8.1, where if you have custom modules that don't have that done, good luck. Because uh, that can be a headache, but I, I digress. Uh, but yeah, two line changes, 30 seconds later, you have a completely new version of something that can be shared out. It's containerized, you can share it out, it doesn't use all your system resources, and reproducible, that's a big thing. So, what all did we accomplish here? Well, all the things. We got a local environment that mimics production, mimics Acquia, created containers to separate Drupal, Gatsby, Dev, and a static site, so we had the static HTML, I, one of the nice things about Gatsby is it's lightning fast. You saw how fast that page loaded. Um, and we made some memories along the way. Any questions? All right, so thank you all for coming. I appreciate you stopping in for this. Uh, if you're interested in the GitHub repo, GitHub, JD does dev, decoupled docs of the demo, because I really like alliteration, apparently. Um, I haven't updated it with my latest changes, but if you'd like to you know, take a look, it's there. And if there's nothing else, go eat. Get out. <laughs> Thank you.